So good afternoon, everyone. So let's just wait for the others first. Um, please share this um, FB Live para marami tayong matulungang um, aspiring registered criminologist. So hi, Kel Kelvin Kepe. Sepe or Kepe? Shout out to you. So please, uh, naririnig ba ako? Clear ba? All clear ba ako sa inyo? Good afternoon, everyone. Please comment kung clear yung voice ko or yung reception ko sa inyo. So later on, um, habang nagdi-discuss tayo, uh, I will turn off the camera para at least yung internet ko is maging mas stable siya. Siyempre, mas importante kasi yung PowerPoint and yung boses ko in discussing. So, sa ngayon, na ba naging intay tayo before we start, mag-open cam lang muna ako. But later on, uh, magta-turn off cam ako para at least ma-make sure natin na maayos yung um, connectivity natin. Okay, thank you very much. So, kamusta naman kay Jan? Good afternoon. Good afternoon sa inyo. So as of now, 25 viewers tayo. So mga siguro um at exactly 3:10 um mag-start na tayo mag-discuss para at least malaki-laki yung ma-cover nating uh, topics. So as you can see on our PowerPoint or on my PowerPoint presentation, so yung subject na i-discuss ko is Introduction to Criminology. So Introduction to Criminology is under the area of criminal, uh, Sociology of Crime and Ethics. So this is the first subject na tinitake natin uh, pag tayo ay nag-take ng Bachelor of Science in Criminology. So ito yung pinaka-first major subject na may encounter natin. So, I chose uh, Introduction to Criminology because uh, this subject, uh, I found it um, very fundamental. So, uh, kasi ano siya eh, itong subject na to, it is the basics, pero hindi siya yung basic na madali. So, yung Intro to Crim, um, ito yung subject na magbibigay, na magbibigay sa atin ng overview and yung essential uh, knowledge na dapat na meron tayo in taking up um, other subjects ng criminology kasi uh, halos madadaanan natin dito yung CBI, uh, law, or CLJ. So, kaya kailangan dito tayo mag-focus. Kumbaga, isa to sa mga dapat pag-focusan natin. So, yun. Antayin lang natin. So, 3.10, mag-start na tayo. So, kamusta yung iba dyan? Uh, umuulan pa ba dyan sa inyo?
Nako, umuulan pa pala. Sa, dito sa amin sa QC, hindi na umuulan, pero mahanginangin pa din. So at exactly 3.10, magsimula na tayo. Ba, nanonood pala dito si Kagata. Keep safe din sa'yo. Kamusta ang pagre-review? So, we will start at exactly 3.10 para uh, maraming makapag-join. So, share-share nyo na yung um, ating FB Live para at least madaming mo kapag makanood or makapag-review. So, prepare na kayo ng mga notebook or ball pen. So, if you want to take down notes uh, dito sa ating lecture. So, it's very important na mag-take down notes tayo para at least malaman natin kung uh, para at least magkaroon tayo ng kopya sa sarili natin. And uh, siguro ako kasi when I was still studying, pag sinusulat ko talaga siya, mas natatandaan ko siya. So, yun. If it's effective to you, so mag-take down notes kayo para at least Uh, tumatak sa isipan nyo or sa utak nyo.
Okay, so yun, maayong hapon din sa iyo, Jel Medrano. So good afternoon to everyone sa mga newly joined um reviewees or mga amisai. So as of now, nasa 67 uh, viewers na tayo. So yun. Siguro let's formally start start our discussion. So by introducing myself, so uh, turn off ko na yung camera para at least mas maging clear yung reception natin sa isa't isa. So stop ka na. So yun. So for, uh, our topic for today is all about introduction to criminology. So as we all know, introduction to criminology, as what I've mentioned kanina, is the first subject that you are going to take when you choose uh, to study criminology or bachelor of science in criminology and this subject is under the area of sociology of crime and ethics so particularly yung magiging discussion natin would be um focusing on or we will be focusing on uh, classical criminology so uh, first is the classical criminology and then its influence or classical criminology and its theories and its influence to crime causation and crime deterrence. And then afterwards, we will be discussing its application or contribution to our criminal justice system. So bakit ko ba uh, pinili yung ganung setup ng discussion na uh, uh, concept, which is the classical criminology and classical theory, and then um, jumping into its influence to crime causation and crime control or crime deterrence, and then application to or contribution to CJS. Kasi... The definition of criminology is like that. So the concept, um, because ano bang objective ng criminology? It tries to explain the nature, cause, and control of crime. So later on, aalamin natin yung mga uh, most uh, or yung mga definition or concepto ng word ng criminology or uh, ng discipline ng criminology. So let us start now. So first of all, I will I would like to introduce myself. I am Sean Francis San Diego. So I am a magna cum laude graduate from Universidad de Manila with a program of Bachelor of Science in Criminology. So last April 20, uh, last June 2019, I successfully hurdled the criminology's licensure examination. So aside from being a registered criminologist, I am also a civil service professional passer, a civil service honor grant eligible. And currently, I am taking up my master's, master's of Science in Criminal Justice with specialization in criminology at the same institution of learning. I am also a co-author of criminology and research books, um, a review lecturer for criminology's licensure examination, and currently, I am affiliated as a full-time criminology instructor at the College of Criminal Justice Education at Finma St. Jude College. So, yon. Now, let's go to the concept of criminology. So, kung makikita natin dito sa ating PowerPoint, pre PowerPoint presentation, tumaas yung crime rate. So, the reach of crime has become a stumbling block to the society's peace and order. So, naapektuhan yung peace and order in the community nung tumaas ang crime commission or crime rate sa isang society. Creating fear and new challenges to the citizen be and the government itself. So ibig sabihin nung tumaas ang uh, or lumaganap ang paggawa ng krime sa isang lugar, naapektuhan yung kapayapaan, yung peace and order sa mga sa society and therefore it created fear to the uh, to the individuals or to the citizens as well as it created new challenges to the government or to the authority. Therefore the crime control it has been a question to everyone. So big question yung crime control, kung paano mape-prevent yung commission ng crime. That led to their interest to the field of criminology. So ano ba si criminology in its simplest context or in, in its simplex, uh, simplest definition? So criminology is an emerging academic discipline that involves the scientific method in studying the nature, extent, cause and control of criminal behavior. So, ibig sabihin, nung hinanap nila or nung ang government natin or ang mga otoridad ay nagtatanong kung paano nila mapipigilan yung krimen, doon uh, nag-led yung kanilang interes sa pag-aaral ng criminology. Kung saan ang criminology, ito yung pag-aaral ng nature, extent, 
cause and control of criminal behavior. So the said field of study is um, considered as an inter interdisciplinary science. So bakit tinawag na interdisciplinary science si criminology? Because it is composed of various academic disciplines or academic fields such, such as psychology, anthropology, sociology, criminal justice, and natural science. So meron pa niya mga law and political science. So this academic disciplines is codependent to criminology or helping criminology in trying to achieve its goal, um, in trying to explain the nature, cause, and control of crime. So ibig sabihin si criminology, kapartner niya yung mga allied academic disciplines. Upang sa ganun ay matry niyang ma-explain or ma-achieve niya yung kanyang very goal in trying to explain the nature, cause, and control of crime. Truth be told, si criminology, isa siya sa mga most interesting and diverse academic discipline as it studies the internal and external factors of the society in its expedition to explain crime causation and crime deterrence. So bakit siya naging most interesting? Naging most interesting siya because the subject of criminology is society. And society is composed of individuals. And ang sabi nga nila, studying individuals is one of the most interesting subject in the world. Criminology is also regarded as the uh, diverse academic discipline. Pag sinabi nating diverse academic discipline, malawak. Uh, for the very reason, dun nga sa minention ko kanina, na si criminology is an interdisciplinary science. So hindi lang siya nag-stand alone as criminology in trying to explain the nature, cause, and control of crime. So ibig sabihin, katulong niya itong mga various academic disciplines such as psychology, anthropology, sociology, criminal justice, and natural sciences in trying to explain the nature and control of crime. So sociologists and other scholars from, from various academic disciplines tries to give their take in the explanation or definition of criminology. But ito yung most widely accepted and most uh, popular definition. It came from Edwin Suterland and... Donald Crisay. So si Edwin Sutherland and Donald Crisay is one of the preeminent criminologists in which dinefine nila si criminology as the body of knowledge regarding crime as a social phenomenon. It includes within its scope the process of making laws, the breaking of laws, and of reacting towards the breaking of laws. The objective of criminology is the development of a body of general and verified principles and of other types of knowledge regarding this process of law, crime, and treatment. So I expect you, uh, Amisai, mga reviewees ng Criminology's Licensure Examination or graduates na kayo, syempre, alam nyo na yung definition given by Suterland and Crisay kasi isa yan sa mga nagiging requirement um, nung tayo ay nagtitake ng introduction to criminology kung saan maging familiar with the definition given by Suterland and Donald Pisay. Now, let's go, uh, let's have a discussion about the definition given by them. So, by explaining some of its areas of interest or the various areas of interest given by Suterland and Crisay. So, first is crime as a social phenomenon. So, ibig sabihin si Crisay and Suterland, niregard nila si criminology or si crime as a social phenomenon. Pag sinabi kasi natin social phenomenon, these are individual and external occurrence or influences within a society that significantly affects one's behavior or opinion. So ibig sabihin, ito yung mga bagay na nangyayari sa ating buhay. It may be internal or individual or external factor or occurrence na nakaka-influensya kung paano tayo magre-react or kung paano tayo Mabubuhay. Because uh, when we say social phenomena, ito yung mga influences within the society kung saan tayo gumagalaw. So bakit ni regard ni Suterland and ni Crisay na crime ay isang social phenomenon? Because individuals' behaviors, traits, and characteristics may play a vital role in the cause of criminal behavior. So ito yung tinatawag natin kanina na internal factors. Diba sinabi ko kanina, criminology studies the internal and external factors of uh, internal and external factors of the society. So ito yung internal factor, yung first phrase, individuals' behavior, traits, and characteristics 
may play a vital role in the cause of criminal behavior. But most criminologists tend to believe that the existence of such is driven by social factors. So yung social factors, ito naman yung tinatawag natin na external factors. So ano yung mga social factors na dyan si environment, social interactions, and personal relationships. So paano natin, uh, paano natin ma masusuportahan yung claim na yung mga uh, social factors such as environment, social interactions, and personal relationships ang nakaka-apekto sa criminal behavior ng isang tao. So, meron mga theories na uh, pinag-aralan natin na maaring sumuporta sa claim na yan. So, first is the environment. Sa environment, uh, ang theory na maaring sumuporta dyan is the social disorganization theory. So, please, uh, makinig po tayo about these theories. So, si Social Disorganization Theory by Henry McKay and Clifford Shaw. So, this theory focuses on the conditions within the urban environment that affects crime rate. So, ibig sabihin daw, it is the connection of the crime rate to the conditions of the urban environment or kung saan ka nakatira. Sinabi ni Henry McKay and Clifford Shaw that crime rates are linked to neighborhood, ecological characteristics. So, ibig sabihin daw, ang crime rate daw is may relationship or ang pagtaas ng crime rate is a relationship or a product of the neighborhood ecological characteristics. And pag daw ang neighborhood uh, ecological characteristic mo is the integrated and slum conditions, these are the primary causes of criminal behavior. So ibig sabihin, pag ikaw daw nakatira sa society or sa community na the integrated and slum conditions, uh, mas vulnerable ang mga tao to develop criminal behavior. So, paano ba natin masasabi na pag tayo ay nakatira sa slum conditions? So, may mga characteristics or checklist yan. So, first is unsafe and or unhealthy homes. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga bahay na walang security measures, hindi matibay, such as lack of windows, walang bintana, madumi ang uh, sahig, uh, may mga tumutulo sa pader at sa bubong, and uh, Unstable homes or mga weak structures of the house. Second is overcrowded homes. When we say overcrowded homes, napakalit ng bahay mo. So kung kunyari ang bahay mo is good only for five person or five uh, people, pero ang nakatira doon sampo. So doble agad. So that uh, we can regard that or consider that as an overcrowded home. Third is limited or no access to basic service or necessity. So ibig sabihin, ito yung Wala kayong access or wala kayong tubig, wala kayong kuryente, wala kayong um, CR, wala kayong transportation or mahirap bago ka makasakay or malayo yung uh, mode of transportation. That is also a characteristic of a slum condition area. And the last one is no secure land tenure. So ibig sabihin nakatirik yung bahay mo sa hindi mo lupa. So usually these are the squatter areas. So, etong social disorganization theory, it views that crime-ridden neighborhoods are as those in which residents are uninterested in community matters. Bakit ba natin nasabi na de-integrated or slum condition yung ecological characteristic ng inyong environment? Kasi yung mga social control, agents of social control or sources of social control, such as family, school, church, uh, religion, so yung mga ganon, they are weak and disorganized. Therefore, they are not as efficient as it is for them to be a social control or a form of social control. So, naiintindihan ba tayo? So, I will wait for your comments. Malinaw pa ba ako? All clear pa ba? So please mag-comment po kayo kung malinaw pa tayo. Okay, loud and clear. Thank you very much. So now, let's go or let's jump into differential association theory para naman masuportahan yung claim ng social interaction. So una, natapos na tayo sa social factor na environment. Kung bakit daw nagde-develop ng criminal behavior or... Uh, 
driven by social factors yung uh, development ng criminal behavior or cause of criminal behavior. So ulitin ko lang, ang environment dahil daw kung saan ka nakatira or the community where you resides is the integrated and slum condition. So kumbaga, yung basic control ninyo, social control such as family, envi uh, family school, church, government or the local government are this the integrated or uh, inefficient as a form of social control therefore pag yun ang nangyayari ang mga taong nakatira doon tend to develop criminal behavior or tend to engage into criminal activities now let's go to social interaction so himay-himayin natin para mas lalo nating maintindihan and by um uh, Discussing it one by one, so lagyan natin or supportahan natin ng theories para at least uh, dalawa yung na cover nating topics. Next is social interactions. For social interactions, it can be supported by the theory of Edwin Sutherland. Yung minention ko kanina na nagbigay ng definition ng criminology together with Donald Crisay. Wherein si Edwin Sutherland, uh, pinropose nga yung uh, differential association theory wherein criminality is a function of a learning process that could affect any individual in any culture. It focuses on the transmission of criminal behavior. So, sinasabi lang dito ni differential association theory or ni Edwin Sutherland is that ang criminality daw or ang criminal behavior daw ay natututunan and it can, it can be learned through social interaction or pakikipag-interact sa tao. Kasi for example, si letter A na known criminal and then si letter B, bata, nakipag-usap siya or nagkasalubong sila sa kanilang komunidad and then si letter A or si known criminal, kinausap si letter B. So nagkakwentuhan sila for uh, siguro mga 30 minutes. And what if si letter A ang ikukwento niya kay letter B is yung mga kanyang criminal experiences or yung mga experiences na nangyari sa kanya nung, ka nung siya ay gumagawa pa ng krimen. And therefore, there is a tendency that letter A transmits criminal behavior to letter B. So, ibig sabihin, through social interaction, natutunan ng bata kung paano mag, uh, gumawa ng krimen. And that is a criminal behavior. It can be transmitted. So, ibig sabihin, natututunan, it is a learning process through social interaction. So, yun lang yung gusto sabihin ni Edwin Sutherland sa differential association theory. Ano to? May, may nag-comment, Jex Bonafide. I love you, Sir Malino. Apo. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So, next is yung personal relationships. For personal relationship naman as a, a driven social factor, it can be supported by social bond theory. So, if I were you, makinig talaga kayo and mag-take down notes kasi later on, meron tayong 10 items question and answer with ratio. So, uh, that questions or yung mga questions don will be from uh, the topics that I will be discussing today. So, for personal relationship, nandyan si social bond theory by Travis Hershey. Kung saan, sinabi dito that linking the onset of criminality to the weakening of ties that bind people in the society. So, ibig sabihin daw, ang dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng criminality sa isang lugar is because yung uh, agents of socialization are shutting down. So, ano ba yung mga agents of socialization? Katulad lang din siya ni social disorganization theory kung saan yung agents of socializations are ineffective and the agents of socializations are family, religion, peer groups, school, and government. So, etong limang to, the five agents of socializations, again, family, religion, peer groups, school, and government. At pag yung liman to are ineffective or shutting down, hindi nila ginagawa ng tama yung kanilang trabaho as a form of social control. Therefore, magkakaroon ng criminality sa lugar. Kasi ang kiniklaim ni social bond theory, ang tao daw hindi gumagawa ng krimen or hindi sila nagre-resort into, uh, into illegal activities because they are fear or the, of the damage that uh, it will occur sa relationship nila dun sa agents of socialization. So, ibig sabihin, hindi sila gumagawa ng krimen kasi natatakot sila 
na maapektuhan yung relasyon at yung tingin sa kanila nung limang agents of socialization na yun. Kasi nga naman, pag gumawa ka ng krimen, ano na lang sasabihin ng pamilya ko? Ano na lang sasabihin sa akin ng mga ka-churchmates ko? Ano na lang sasabihin sa akin ng mga kaklase ko? Ano na lang sasabihin sa akin ng mga kaibigan ko? But, If yung tao na yon is wala nang pakialam sa so sasabihin ng agents of socializations because in the first place the agents of socialization are ineffective or hindi na gumagawa ng trabaho nila as a form of social control therefore wala na siyang pakialam eh ano pa yung titingnan niya na magagalit or masisira yung relationship ko meron na weakening of ties between that individual and the agents of socialization Now let's go to the process of making laws. So this is the second area of interest in the definition given by Sutherland and Crisay. So in the process of making laws, it is a division in criminology referred to as sociology of law. Because as we all know, there are three divisions of criminology, which are sociology of law, criminal etiology, and penology. So in the process of making laws, this is the division in criminology. Referred to as sociology of law, in which it attempts to offer scientific analysis of the conditions under which penal or criminal laws are being developed as a process of formal social control. So, ibig sabihin dito sa the process of making laws, ang gusto niyang tignan dito is kung effective ba yung criminal law as a form of social control or effective ba ang criminal law sa society. So, yun yung sa the process of making laws. Next is the process of breaking laws. For the process of breaking laws, this division of criminology attempts to provide a scientific analysis of the causes of crime. So ito naman yung tinatawag natin na criminal etiology. So sa criminal etiology, pinag-aaralan dito yung mga various causes or scientific analysis of what are the possible causes of crime. Kasi nga kahit may batas na na pumipigil or naguutos para gawin ng mga bagay at meron ng kalampatang parusa pag ito ay sinunod o hindi ginawa, pero the person opted to break the law. So ano kaya yung mga possible causes kung bakit niya binreak yung law? What are the reasons behind the breaking of law? As one is the reacting towards the breaking of law. Ito naman yung tinatawag natin na penology. It is a division in criminology concerns with the control and prevention of crimes and the treatment of youthful offenders. So dito naman sa penology or the reacting towards the breaking of laws, ano yung mga possible measures to take ng society or ng government or ng authority natin towards the breaking of law na kahit may batas na they opted to break the law, what are their possible measures or countermeasures para mapigilan yan, which is prevention of crimes, and on how to control it. So, now let's go to the classical criminology. So, various school of thoughts in criminology emerges as the society changes. So, ibig sabihin, as the society develops, di ba, isa yan sa... Uh, characteristics ni criminology, dynamic yan. Kung saan, ang criminology, nag a yan depending on its social, uh, ang tinatawag natin dito, yung uh, society, uh, society changes. In order to develop criminal behavior or in order to adapt uh, the development of criminal behavior, crime causation, and possible crime control. So, ibig sabihin si criminology, it develops as society changes or uh, criminology adapts as the society develops. And the forerunner in the school of thought in criminology is the classical criminology. The classical criminology was developed during the Enlightenment in response to excessive and cruel punishments because before the classical criminology, ito yung tinatrawag natin na pre-classical criminology, yung forms of punishments are really excessive and cruel, inhumane, inhumane punishments. So kumbaga talagang torture, banishment, corporal punishment, uh, death penalty, name it. So, yun yung mga punishments before. But nung nag-emerge na si classical school of criminology, it developed uh, a more humane form of punishment. So, the writings and ideas of Jeremy Bentham and Cesar Beccaria led what is referred today as classical criminology. So, si Jeremy Bentham and 
Cesar Becaria, ito yung mga uh, people or mga uh, persons behind the classical criminology. So let's go first to Jeremy Bentham. So Jeremy Bentham is a social philosopher who profound the concept of utilitarianism. Ano yung utilitarianism? He views that human behavior was a result of a rational thought process. Kung baga daw yung behavior or yung personality or yung actions natin sa isang tao or the way we act or conduct ourselves to the others are a result or a product of a rational thought process o yung pag-iisip. And uh, through that, he developed the pseudo-mathematical formula called philosophic or hedonistic calculus. So please, pakitandaan, utilitarianism and philosophic calculus or hedonistic calculus kasi usually tinatanong yan sa board exam. So for this, Si uh, philosophic or hedonistic calculus, it interprets that individuals are like human calculators who calculates all the factors into an equation as a way of deciding whether or not a crime is worth to be committed through pleasure and pain principle. So sinasabi ni Jeremy Bentham through his uh, philosophic calculus na ang tao daw para daw yung calculator kung saan winiway in lahat ng factors. May it be personal or internal and external or social factors Wini-weigh in niya yan at nilalagay niya sa isang equation na parang calculator. And then, wini-weigh in niya kung siya ba ay mas makikinabang o hindi. If the result, after weighing in all the factors, and the result is pleasure, therefore, gagawin at gagawin niya yung action na yon or gagawin at gagawin niya yung krimen. But if the product or result is pain, uh, the, uh, the person will not engage into that action or criminal activity. Kasi nga, yung, uh, you, uh, we are like human calculators through pleasure and pain principle. Yung produkto or yung inaalam natin uh, by weighing in the equations or factors is if tayo ba ay makikinabang o hindi. So it stands to reason that criminal behavior could be eliminated or controlled if the punishment to be inflicted to the would-be criminal is greater than the benefits of crime. So, ibig sabihin daw, we can uh, efficiently deter or control criminal behavior or criminal activities if ipapaintindi natin sa tao that uh, yung pain or uh, pain or yung punishment na mai-inflict sa kanila or mararanasan nila is greater or way greater than the pleasure na maaring nilang makuha. Kasi nga, di ba, true pleasure and pain principle. Now, let's go to Cesar Beccaria. Cesar Beccaria is a known father of classical criminology. So he applied the principles on his famous book on crimes and punishment. So yung whole name ni Cesar Beccaria is si Cesar Marquis de Beccaria Bonesana. So the Italian criminologists argued for a more humanitarian forms of punishment and held the punishment should fit the crime and not be excessive. So kaya nga siya tinawag na father of classical criminology because one of the major contributions of classical criminology into the criminology discipline or academic discipline is it enlightens the people and uh, fought for a more humanitarian form of punishment. So here are the following principles proposed by Cesar Beccaria. So laws should be used to maintain social contract. Second, only legislators should create laws. Third, judges should impose punishments only in accordance with the law. Judges should not interpret laws. Punishment should be based on the pleasure and pain principle. Punishment should be based on the act, not on the actor. The punishment should be determined by the crime. Punishment should be prompt and effective. All people should be treated equally. Capital punishment should be abolished. And the last one is, it is better to prevent crime than to, pro than to punish criminals. So guys, I will be discussing this later on one by one uh, as we establish its application to the administration of criminal justice system. So if we discuss again isa -isa sa inyong mamaya as we establish yung uh, connection ni classical criminology sa criminal justice system natin. So truth be told, the writings and ideas of Jeremy Bentham and Cesar Beccaria led to what is referred today as classical criminology. So these are the focal points of the school of thought, in, uh, the school of thought, which is the classical criminology. 
So, bago natin i-discuss 'yan, I just want you to ask, uh, I just want to ask you if nakakasunod pa ba tayo? Am I all clear? So, all clear pa naman tayo. Okay, all clear. Sige. Now, let's discuss the focal points in criminology. So, first is, in every society, people have free will to choose criminal or lawful solutions to meet their needs or settle their problems. So, ibig sabihin daw, Ang lahat daw ng tao na nabubuhay ay may free will or may kalayaang mamili if yung kanilang needs or yung kanilang problema ay susolusyonan ba nila ito through criminal or legal solutions. So, kumbaga may karapatan daw tayong mamili dahil tayo ay may kakayahang mamili kung tayo daw ba ay gagawa ng mga bagay uh, which is legal or illegal depending na dun sa ating desisyon. Next, criminal solutions can be very attractive because for little effort, they told the promise of a huge payoff. So, ibig sabihin daw, yung solution, uh, solution daw, or para daw mamit natin yung needs natin through criminal activities, mas be, uh, very attractive. Kasi daw, parang ang nakikita natin is, eh, madali na lang gumawa ng krimen para magkapera. Because they were promise of a huge payoff or a huge reward or a huge pleasure. But a person will choose not to commit crime only if they believe that the pain of expected punishment is greater than the promise of reward. So this is also known as the principle of deterrence. So ibig sabihin daw, ang tao daw, uh, para daw hindi niya gawin uh, ang krimen, para maging unattractive yung criminal solutions, kailangan daw i-incur sa kanila or ipaintindi sa kanila that the pain of expected punishment is greater than the promise of reward. And the last one is, in order to be an effective deterrent, punishment must be severe, certain, and swift enough to convince potential criminals that crime does not pay. Kailangan daw ang penalty or punishment na naka-impose is severe, certain, and swift enough to convince potential criminals na hindi na gumawa ng krimen. So the rational choice theory can be traced its roots in the classical school of criminology. So, dito na tayo sa rational choice theory. So, ang rational choice theory is, sinasabi dito that people choose all behavior, including criminal behavior. So, sinabi na nga kanina that one of the focal points in criminology is that tayo daw ay may kalayaang mamili. And therefore, yung pagpili daw natin ng ating behavior na ima-manifest or ipapakita ay it, it includes criminal behavior also. Di ba nga sinabi ni Jeremy Bentham that the human behavior is a result or a product of rational thought process or pag-iisip natin. Second, their choices are designed to bring them pleasure and reduce pain. So, ibig sabihin, uh, nature na ng tao yan na pag tayo ay mamimili sa uh, dalawang sitwasyon, ano ba yung mas mag-gain tayo ng pleasure and magre-reduce yung pain? Of course, doon tayo sa mas matimbang yung pleasure or yung reward na makukuha natin. Third, criminal choices can be controlled by fear of punishment. Therefore, kung ana-attract ang mga tao na gumawa ng krimen because they they are promised of a huge payoff or a huge reward, therefore, uh, the most efficient way to control it is to establish a punishment. And that punishment must be severe, certain, and swift. The greater its ability to control criminal behavior. So according to the contemporary rational choice approach, criminal behavior arises when the offender contemplates to break the law after considering personal factors and situational factors. So ibig sabihin daw, tumataas daw or nag-e-engage daw tayo into our criminal behavior after daw natin i-weigh in yung personal and situational factors. So balik na naman tayo dun sa basics. Bakit tayo nag weigh in? Because sinabi nga ni Jeremy Bentham, we are like human calculators. Second, 
personal and situational factors. That's why criminology studies both internal and external factors um, in the cause of crime. So therefore, ano ba yung mga personal factors? This is the need for money, revenge, trails, and capability of the would-be criminal to perpetrate the perfect crime. So sa personal factors, these are internal factors na nasa loob natin. Kung baga, uh, ano ba yung motibo natin? Ano yung rason natin? Ba't kailangan natin gawin yung krimen? O kunyari, wala tayong pera, kaya kailangan natin mag -nakaw. That is your motive, to gain for money. And then also, we need to contemplate, or the would-be uh, criminal also contemplates if is he or she capable enough to perpetrate the crime without being caught. So, yun yung mga personal or internal factors. While for situational factors, these are target vulnerability and availability of capable guardian. Ito yung may available target ba? May available victim ba? Vulnerable victim. Second is, meron bang uh, presence ng capable guardian? May kasama ba siya? May pulis ba dyan? Um, may barangay tanod ba dyan? Meron bang mga other uh, people or persons na, that are capable enough to guard the vulnerable victim? So, pag wala yun, or pagka there is a presence of a capable guardian, and uh, rather there is a presence of target vulnerability or target victim, and there is an absence of capable guardian, therefore, criminal behavior will surely arise. So this explains that people who realize the risk of crime outweighs the rewards may decide to do so. But if they think that they are not incap uh, they are incapacitated due to police visibility or uh, availability of capable guardian and other factors that stands a good chance of being caught and punished, they forego crime and not risk it. So, para mas lalo natin maintindihan, let's uh, refer ourselves to the illustration. So, dito, sa so makikita natin yung illustration, the pain outweighs the pleasure. So, ibig sabihin, after contemplating the personal and situational factors, nakita niya na mas matimbang si pain kumpara kay pleasure. Therefore, hindi yan gagawa ng krimen. So, hindi siya mag-engage into criminal activities. Next, illustration. Dito sa illustration na to, the pleasure outweighs the pain. So, the pleasure is greater than the pain. Therefore, that person will commit or engage to criminal activities. So, yun yung gusto sabihin ni rational choice theory. Now, let's go to the contribution of classical criminology in crime causation and crime deterrence. Because doon nga sa definition natin, di ba, it is the process of making laws, breaking laws, and reacting towards the breaking of laws. Ang criminology, ang objective niya is malaman kung ano yung nature ng krimen, kung pa, bakit merong krimen, or bakit, uh, what is the cause of crime or the causation of crime, and also on how to control it through crime deterrence. So, crime causation and crime deterrence. Let's go first to crime causation. For crime causation, ito daw yung mga possible or uh, these are the following causes why people tend to commit or omit such acts even if there is a law forbidding or commanding it. So first, crime is caused by the individual's free will. So, ibig sabihin daw, ang tao daw, may kalayaan yan mabili. Di ba? Sabi nga kanina, people choose all behavior. And that includes criminal behavior. Second, human beings are rational and, makes, uh, and make decisions freely and with understanding the possible causes, consequences in doing so. Which means we are designed to bring pleasure and pain and reduce pain as we, um, kumbaga, as we decide on something or as we weigh in factors uh, we are designed to decide to bring pleasure to ourselves and, of course, to reduce pain. Next, crime causation can also be explained by the availability of suitable targets and the absence of capable guardians and the presence of motivated offenders. Ito naman yung tinatawag natin na routine activity theory. So, for routine activity theory by Cohen and Felson, I will be discussing that later on. Next, motivated rational people will violate the law if left free and unrestricted. So, dapat daw, uh, ta, uh, mayroong aggressive policy ang ating government or ang ating authority in order to restrict 
the motivated the rational people in committing crime or in violating the law. Next, criminals tend to repeat their criminal acts because the punishment inflicted to them is ineffective. So, ibig sabihin daw, ginagawa at gumagawa uli ng krimen or uh, known criminals or mga ex-convicts tend to re-engage to criminal activities. Why? Because yung punishment na naranasan nila is very ineffective. Kung baga, it, does, uh, it did not affect their uh, minds or hindi, nag, uh, hindi siya certain, swift, and um, excessive or hindi siya certain, swift, and severe. Next, short sentences imposed to a criminal will still give opportunity to continue their criminal career. So for example, if a motivated offender is just 20 years, 21 years old, when he was in prison for the crime of robbery, wherein he gained 1 million from it. And the, kunya, uh, this is just a, a, a hypothetical example or situation para lang ma-discuss natin or para lang mas maintindihan nyo tong last bullet. Yung short sentences imposed to a criminal. So, and the punishment given to him is only for a six months imprisonment. So, compare nyo ang 1 million sa 6 months imprisonment. Of course, hindi yan proportionate kasi kung titignan ninyo, mas mabigat pa rin si pleasure na nakuha o yung reward kumpara doon sa punishment na nakuha niya. Because 1 million compared to 6 months. So, mabigat pa rin si 1 million. Therefore, the, ple the pleasure outweighed the pain. With that, motivated offender will still have a lot of time to re-engage into criminal activities. Kasi at its peak pa siya nung kanyang criminal career. And na-realize niya na yung punishment inflicted to him is ineffective. Therefore, he will still re-engage into criminal activities. So ano, uh, copy and clear pa ba? Loud and clear? So, loud and clear pa ba tayo? Okay, loud and clear. Thank you very much. Now, let's go to crime deterrence. Um, it has been said that crime is a result of rational thought process. Diba sinabi ko nga kanina that um, uh, as according to classical criminology, crime is a result of a rational thought process. And people will choose to commit crime after weighing its rewards and benefits and factoring in their needs and abilities. Then it can be eradicated by convincing potential motivated offenders that Crime is a poor choice that will not bring them rewards but instead led to hardship and deprivation. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan daw iparealize natin kay would-be criminal that uh, ang paggawa ng krimen ay isa sa mga pinakamaling gagawin niya or pinakamaling decision na gagawin niya because it will not give them the huge payoff or the uh, it will not bring them rewards but it will lead them to pain. Second, crime is not worth the effort. It is easier to work at a legitimate job than to evade police, outwit alarms, and avoid security. So ang sinasabi dito is that hindi daw worth it ang paggawa ng krimen. Mas madali pa daw magtrabaho sa legitimate uh, job or magkaroon ng legitimate job than oh, wait lang. Um, kumbaga, it is easier to work at a legitimate job rather than sa illegitimate work or which is illegal activities. And the last one is, crime brings pain that is not easily forgotten. People who experience the pains of punishment will not readily commit more crimes. Kasi nga, ang gusto nung i-ano dito or i-reiterate ni classical criminology is that the penalty is more severe, certain, and swift. The greater its ability to control criminal behavior. Now let's go to the following crime control strategies based on the rational choice theory that may aid law enforcement authorities in crime control. So, na just situational crime prevention, general deterrence strategies, specific deterrence strategies, and incapacitation strategies. So, importante rin nating malaman kung ano-ano yung mga yan. So, na just situational 
si specific, si general, and si incapacitation. So first, let's go to situational crime prevention. So as you can read, this uh, strategy is intended at convincing the would-be criminals to avoid specific targets. It relies on the doctrines that uh, it, it relies on the doctrine that crime can be avoided if motivated offenders are denied access to suitable crime targets or suitable victim. This can be utilized through home security systems or guards, which broadcast the message that guardianship is great here. Stay away. The potential rewards are not worth the risk of apprehension. So in its simplest context, si situational crime prevention, sinasabi dito that criminal acts will only be avoided if, letter A, potential targets are guarded securely. Second, the means to commit crime are controlled or wala yung opportunity in doing the crime. And third is potential offenders or the, the would-be criminals are carefully monitored. So this can be achieved si situational crime prevention through the use of residential architectural designs that reduces criminal opportunities through security, uh, installation of security systems, deadbolt locks, high-intensity street lighting, um, and neighborhood watch patrols. Next is specific deterrent strategies. So specific deterrent strategies, this strategy refers to punishing known criminals so severely that they will never tempted to repeat their offenses. If crime is rational, then painful punishment should reduce its future allure. So sinasabi dito that this can be achieved by the imposition of harsh prisons and stiff lines. Si specific deterrent strategies, nakafocus siya sa mga known criminals na ito na yung mga kilala na ng authorities or law enforcement authorities as known criminals. Therefore, punishment works if a connection can be established between the plan action and memories of its consequences. If these recollections are adequately intense, the action will unlikely to occur again. So ang sinasabi dito kay specific deterrent strategies is through imposition of harsh prisons and steep lines, si known criminals pag natapos niya na yung kanyang sentensya and lumabas na siya, every time nagagawa siya ng action or plan action, uh, every time na siya ay magpaplano na gumawa ng bagay, magre-recollect sa kanya or yung memories niya of the consequences during his or her time sa prison. So pag gano'n at nagkaroon ng connection between the plan action and the memories, yung action will unlikely to occur again or unlikely to occur again. So therefore, um, si known criminal will not re-engage to criminal activities. Kabalik tara naman yan ni general deterrent strategies. So for general deterrent strategies, these strategies are intended at making potential criminals fear the consequences of crime. Kung si specific deterrents nakafocus siya o yung strategy niya nakafocus for known criminals, si general deterrent strategies nakafocus siya sa future or potential criminals. So these strategies are intended at making potential criminals fear the consequences of crime. The threat, the threat of punishment is meant to convince rational criminals that crime does not pay. So this can be done by implementing death penalty, mandatory sentences, and aggressive policing. So for general deterrent strategy, sinasabi dito that crime rates are influenced and controlled by the threat and application of criminal punishment. If the people is afraid of being apprehended and punished, they will not risk the breaking of law. So ano, loud and clear pa ba tayo? Please, if you have questions regarding our discussion, uh, feel free or don't hesitate to uh, put it or paano ba to? Magko-comment kayo doon sa FB Live natin. So if you have any questions regarding our discussion, feel free to comment it on the FB Live. Okay, dito kay general deterrent strategies, 
ang sinasabi lang dito is dapat ni connection between the efficiency of punishment and efficiency of the criminal justice system. Kasi nga naman, kung ang tao takot lang sa threat of punishment, pero hindi naman sila takot sa authority or law enforcement authority or the arresting officers, they, they find the authority or the government ineffective. So, ibig sabihin, hindi magiging effective sa general deterrence strategies. Dapat, kumbaga ang Uh, yung wording nga dito, it takes two to tango. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan may partnership between the efficiency of punishment and the efficiency of the criminal justice system. And pag meron dalawang yan at nag-partner sila and they are very effective, the crime rate will surely go down. The last one is incapacitation strategies. For these strategies, it attempts to reduce crime rates by denying motivated offenders to op the opportunity to commit crime. If, despite the threat of law and punishment, some people still find crime attractive, then the only way to control the their behavior is to incarcerate them for extended periods. So, dito kay incapacitation strat strategies, excuse me, From the word itself, incapacitation, you are uh, incapacitating, pinatanggalan mo siya ng capability or ng kakayahan or ng opportunity to commit crime. And paano to ma-achieve? Through long prison sentences and placing more people behind bars. So for incapacitation strategies, if more criminals are sent to prison, the crime rate should go down. Kasi nga naman, yung mga known criminals, wala sa wala sa labas nasa uh, they are guarded sa loob behind bars therefore wala silang opportunity or ina tinatanggalan natin sila ng capability or ng uh, ng opportunity to commit crime and therefore kung hahabaan natin yung long prison sentence or magkakaroon tayo ng long prison sentence and placing more people behind bars therefore most people age out or tatag katatandaan na nila yung kanilang sentensya and the duration of criminal career will be limited. Now let's go to the application of classical criminology in the administration of criminal justice system. So guys, may tanong ba tayo regarding dun sa discussion? Okay, if you don't have any questions, let's go back to our discussion. So, nandito na tayo sa application ng crimin uh, classical criminology sa criminal justice system. So, criminal justice system in its simplest context is the study of the agencies of social control, which are the police, prosecution, courts, and corrections. Ito yung pillars of the criminal justice system. The goal of the criminal justice system is to identify and formulate uh, on what are the effective methods to control or prevent crime. So, ibig sabihin, ang trabaho daw ni criminal justice system is to formulate a method or a measure or a policy to control or to prevent crime. So, ito yung law enforcement, prosecution, courts, and corrections. Therefore, the writings and ideas of the classical criminology are very vital in the administration of a uh, criminal justice system because as proposed by Cesar Becarrea and other utilitarian philosophers, 
crime is a result of a rational thought process. And people will, di ba, again, people will choose to commit crime after such weighing its rewards and benefits and factoring in their needs and abilities. Therefore, it can be eradicated by convincing potential offenders that, ito yung sinabi kanina, that crime is a poor choice that will not bring them rewards but instead led to hardship and deprivation. Crime is only worth the effort, uh, is not worth the effort. It is easier to work at a legitimate job than to evade police, outwit alarms, and avoid security. Crime brings pain that is not easily forgotten. People who experience the pain of punishment will not readily commit more crimes. So ito yung sinasabi. In addition, the classical criminology holds that crime rates are a product of motivated offender, absence of capable guardian, and suitable target or availability of suitable target. Ito yung uh, mentioned ko kanina which is the routine activity theory by Cohen and Felson. Therefore, a central implication of understanding offending in terms of rational calculation means the only way to prevent crime is through the following. Increase the number of guardians, decrease the suitable targets, reduce the offender population, um, implement an aggressive policy from our government or from our authority, and infliction of severe, certain, and swift punishment. So yan yung mga measures or deterrence measures in, in order to prevent or to control the commission of crime. Now, let's go to the application or yung contribution ni Cesar Becarea in the administration of criminal justice system. So ito yung kanina na sinabi ko na i-discuss ko one by one. So again, wala ba kayong questions? So I will wait for your questions. Feel free to ask questions regarding our discussion. Kung may gusto pa kayong bigyan ng linaw or bigyan ng DN. Okay now, let's go to the contributions of Cesar Mecarea in the administration of criminal justice. So ito yung mga principles proposed by the father of classical criminology. So first, Okay, so may tanong dito. General deterrence daw at specific deterrence? So yan, uh, that's a very good question. For general deterrence, nakafocus siya sa future or potential criminals. Kung baga, kailangan daw, takot daw ang tao na ma makulong or maaresto at takot din siya sa possible punishment to be inflicted. For specific deterrence strategies, nakafocus na siya sa mga known criminals. Therefore, ang kanyang operationalization or kung para ito ay ma-achieve, kailangan daw is magkaroon ng harsh prisons and stiff lines. Para yung mga known criminals, once they do or once they plan an action, it will recollect the memories or bad memories na, na experience na during his or her sentence. Kasi nga, we implemented harsh prisons and stiff lines. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, asking that question. So now let's go to uh, this. So first is laws should be used to maintain social contract. So ang law daw, kaya daw yung ginagawa or kaya daw yung finormulate and being implemented or established sa ating society for the purpose of, alam naman na natin yun, main, maintaining peace and order as well as the protection of lives and properties of the citizenry. Therefore, Ang batas daw will serve as a social contract between the citizen and the government. So it is a form of agreement between the government and the citizen na para ang sinasabi dito is that, oh, ito ang mga dapat natin gawin, ito ang mga hindi dapat natin gawin, ito ang dapat natin sundin, ito ang mga hindi dapat natin sundin. So these are uh, laws or rules and regulations to be observed and uh, to be observed by the citizen to make sure that the society is well organized and disciplined. Next, 
only legislators should create laws. Because according to Section 1, Article 6 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, legislative power shall be vested in the legislative branch of the government, which shall consist of the Senate and House of Representatives. Ang mga senators and congressmen are the legislators of our government. Therefore, they, sila yung may kapangyarihan para gumawa ng matas. Next, judge should impose punishment only in accordance with the law. Kasi before, kung ano lang yung matripa ng judge na maging punishment or penalty na i-inflict niya dun sa, uh, sa akusado, yun yung uh, mangyayari. But now, due to classical criminology, nagkaroon tayo ng determination of punishment to be imposed shall be in accordance with our criminal law. Because as we all know, the criminal law provides for the appropriate punishment proportionate to the crime or offense committed. Next, punishment should be based on the pleasure and pain principle. So the punishment or penalty as provided by our criminal law is in accordance to the pleasure and pain principle, making sure that the punishment is severe, swift, and certain to deter criminals in a re-engagement to criminal activities. Kasi ang punishment or penalty as provided by criminal law is proportionate to the gravity of offense committed. Next, the punishment should be determined by the crime because the punishment or penalty to be inflicted must be proportionate on the gravity of the offense committed. Yun yung sinabi ko kanina. Next is punishment should be prompt and effective. The infliction of punishment shall achieve its goal of deterring criminals in re-engaging the criminal activities as well as to discourage the would-be criminals not to commit crime due to the pain that they will experience because of the punishment. Next is all people should be treated equally because balik na naman tayo sa 1987 Philippine Constitution, particularly Section 1, Article 3. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law, nor shall any persons be denied of the equal protection of the laws. So ibig sabihin, sa mata ng batas, lahat tayo ay pantay-pantay. We are equally treated. Next is capital punishment should be abolished. Diba isa yan sa major focal point ng classical criminology? It fought for a more humanitarian form of punishment and abolishing capital punishment. And here in the Philippines, former uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo signed into law yung Republic Act number 9346, which is an act prohibiting the imposition of death penalty in the Philippines. The said law reduces capital punishment to life imprisonment. Next, the use of torture to gain confession should be abolished because the rights of the accused are being protected. And dapat, if we are gaining or we are uh, doing an interrogation or, uh, or an interview doon sa uh, akusado or doon sa criminal, kailangan maprotektahan pa rin yung kanyang rights against any form of torture during the custodial investigation. And these rights are protected by Republic Act Number 7438 or the rights of the accused or the rights of the person arrested, detained, or under custodial investigation as well as the duties of the arresting, detaining, and investigating officers. The last one is, it is better to prevent crimes than to punish criminals. So for it is better to prevent crimes than to punish criminals, our criminal justice system is prioritizing crime control or crime prevention rather than crime suppression. So kung papansinin natin, yung mga police officers natin are more of doing uh, crime prevention activities rather than crime suppression. Kasi nga, di ba, the base, uh, balik tayo sa Lea, the base of the modern concept of policing, di ba, the yardstick of the efficiency of the police is the absence of crime and not how many or uh, hindi na yung old concept na paramihan ng naaresto. So ngayon, ang uh, yardstick or barometer para malaman if efficient yung police officer is or ang uh, police authority in a certain area is the absence of crime. So do you have any questions? So we are done to our video discussion or ang uh, ating discussion. Now let's go to the Q&A portion. So kung ayaw niyo magtanong, ako ang magtatanong.
So, ang gusto kong mangyari in the Q, uh, question and answer portion, I will flash the question and the choices and then mag-comment kayo ng inyong mga sagot. So, i-comment yung mga sagot nyo based on what you learned in our video discussion. And then right after, I will uh, say the correct answer and explain why. Okay? So, the questions are possible board exam questions when it comes to sociology of crime and ethics. So, yun. Um, are you guys ready? Please um, type ready or send ready to our comment if you are ready to answer or to participate in our Q&A. Okay, um, thank you very much. Ang daming nag-type uh, ng ready. So, let's start. Um, so, ang mangyayari is, I will flash the questions and we'll give you 10 seconds to answer. And then, that's the time. After 10 seconds, that's the time that I will flash the correct answer. For number one question. The term criminology was originally, der uh, was originally derived from the Italian word, letter A, crimen, letter B, criminologia, letter C, criminology, and letter D, criminology. Or, ayan. So, ang mangyayari dyan is write the letter of your chosen answer. Okay, uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so the answer or the correct answer is letter B. So very good. Daming nag, ang daming nag, uh, tama na correct answer. So all of you got the correct answer, letter B. So bakit? So the keyword in this question is Italian word. As we all know, si crimen is a Latin word or an Italian word also for crime. While criminologia, ito yung Italian word, means criminology, which is the correct answer. And remember guys that criminologia was coined by Raffaele Garofalo in 1885. While yung letter si criminology, it is the English word for criminology or English term. While letter D is criminolo criminology, so G-I-E. Ito naman yung French word, means criminology, which was coined by Paul Topinard in 1887. Okay, so ready na for second question? So the second question is, the scientific study of crime in the effort of the society to prevent and repress them is, letter A, criminology, letter B, victimology, letter C, crime, and letter D, Sociology of law. So I will give you 10 uh, seconds to answer the question. Okay, so the correct answer is letter A, criminology. Why? 
Criminology is defined as the scientific method in studying the nature, extent, cause, and control of criminal behavior. So, marami sa inyo sumagot ng letter D, sociology of law. As we all know, sociology of law is the division in criminology. We're in, pinag-aaralan dito yung effectiveness ng criminal law as a form of social control. As for victimology, it is the study or the role of of the victim in the relationship of the commission of crime. So, ayun yung victimology. While yung penology, it is the branch of criminology which deals with the management of jails and inmates. So, the answer is letter A. So, number three. The study of criminology involves the use of knowledge and concept of other sciences and the field of study which makes the study of criminology, letter A, Dynamic, letter B, social science, letter C, applied science, and letter D, nationalistics. So please uh, write down your answer or type down your answer. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. So, ang sagot ninyo is, ayan, may tumama ng sagot. So, bakit letter C? Kasi applied science, because the keyword in the question is the use of knowledge, use or application of knowledge and concept of other sciences. So, just a tip for you guys, when you are trying to answer uh, questions, ano nyo siya, um, himay-himayin nyo siya based on the words. So, di ba katulad din ng pag explain ko sa inyo kanina, uh, inihimay-himay ko siya depending of, on its areas of interest. Kasi minsan, nandun na sa question yung sagot. Ito yung question, no? use of knowledge and concept of other sciences. Use, application of knowledge and concept. Ang uh, nationalistic kasi, ito yung karakteristik ng criminology that varies the nature, cultures, and laws of the country. For social science naman, di ba? Kasi crime is a part of society. It is regarded as a social phenomenon. For dynamic, di ba? Uh, criminology is not absolute because it changes or it develops or it adapts as society changes. Now, let's go for number four. Number four, this theory points out that an individual commits crime after he has made a rational choice to do so and has weighted the risks and benefits of the act and selected a particular offense according to the various criteria. Letter A, rational choice theory. Letter B, differential association theory. Letter C, social conflict theory. And letter D, strain theory. So, basahin na maigi yung tanong. After he, uh, this theory points out that individual commits crime after he has made a rational decision to do so and has weighted the risks and benefits of the act and selected a particular offense according to various criteria. Okay, so tama si uh, tama sila. So special mention to Talia May Del Mundo. Uh, I think magka-schoolmate tayo sa UDM back then. So yes, the correct answer is letter A, rational choice theory. Why? Because the keyword here is rational decision. So di ba yan naman ang uh, main uh, or focal point ng rational choice theory. So, bakit hindi differential association theory? Because as I mentioned kanina, differential association theory, criminality is a function of learning process. Kaya daw meron tayong criminality or nag -e engage tayo into criminal activities because it is a learned process or learning process. For social conflict theory naman, view yung crime as a social conflict and economic rivalry. So, usually ito yung mga katayuan natin sa buhay. Conflict between uh, the rich and the poor. 
the boss and the employee. So, yun yung mga social conflict theory. For strain theory, crime is a function of the conflict between goals the people have and the means they can use to legally obtain them. So, kung mapapansin nyo, dinadaanan na rin natin yung mga ibang theories. For strain theory, ang ano dito, nagkakaroon or nag, nagre-resort daw ang tao into criminal activity if yung kanyang goal or yung gusto niyang makamit is hindi niya magawa through legal ways. Kaya nagre-resort siya into illegal activities just to satisfy or just to achieve his or her goal. Number five, next question. The view that, people, that people's behavior is motivated by the pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of fear. A, positivist. B, utilitarian. Letter C, id. Letter D, deterrence. So the question is, the view that people's behavior is motivated by pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of fear. So your answers are letter B. Very good. The answer is letter B, utilitar utilitarian. Why? Kasi si positivist, it is an approach wherein nakakonsentrate siya sa structure ng tao, which is the biological, psychological, and environmental forces uh, kung bakit merong criminal activity. So positivist is a different school of thought in criminology. While id, ito yung sa psychodynamic theory ni Sigmund Freud, kung saan... Ito yung pleasure principle. It is the instinct or desire to satisfy the pleasure of a person. As to deterrence, these are, uh, this is a theory that the threat of punishment will deter people from committing crime and reduce the probability and or level of offending in society. So but utilitarian yung sagot, di ba? Sa util utilitarian, sinabi ni Jeremy Bentham that human behavior is... Um, a product of a rational thought process and we are like human calculators. Ito yung philosophic calculus. That, um, we weigh in now natin lahat ng factors through pleasure and pain principle. So the, the, tawag dito, the keyword here is the pleasure and avoidance, uh, pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of fear. Number six, what scope of study of criminology that deals primarily with the study of the crime commission? Letter A, criminology. Letter B, criminal sociology. Letter C, criminal etiology. And letter D, criminal sociology. So type down your correct answer or your chosen answer.
Ay, hello, hello. So, yun. Uh, number seven. Kaya siya naging so -so sociology. Sorry. Ito na. Ito, may sounds na ako. Hello? So, yon nag-auto-mute pala. Sorry. Okay. So, yon yung number seven. Kaya siya letter B because ang sociology, it is the study of human society. Okay? Clear na tayo sa number seven. Clear na po tayo sa number 7. Okay. Let's go now to number 8. He said that individuals are like human calculators. Before a person commits crime, he first analyzes whether the satisfaction he would gain is greater than the possible negative effect he would suffer if he gets caught doing the crime. Letter A, Cesar Becarea. Letter B, Cesar Lombroso. Letter C, Edwin Suterland, and letter B, Jeremy Bentham. Okay. How about the others? Okay, so the correct answer is... Sige. Yun. The correct answer is letter D, Jeremy Bentham. Because, di ba, diniscuss natin kanina si Jeremy Bentham. He is a social philosopher which profound the concept of utilitarianism. And the utilitarianism and philosophic calculus, di ba? Niregard niya ang tao as a, uh, as a human calculator. Kasi si Cesar Becarea, he is the father of classical criminology. Yung diniscuss din natin. Si Cesar Lombroso naman, he is the father of modern criminology. And si Edwin Suterland naman, siya yung nagbigay ng famous definition of criminology and profound the concept of differential association theory. Yes, the keyword here is human calculators. Kasi so, diba, basta pagkaganyan, pag may tanong agad na if ever na tao yung itatanong and then nabasa niyo yung human calculators, Jeremy Bentham yan. But if theory or concept ang tinatanong, philosophic calculus or utilitarianism, either of the three, uh, either of the two. All clear? Ah, let's go to number nine. He explained that individuals learn criminal behavior by means of communications with persons who dwell in criminality. A. Cesar Becarea B. Charles B. Goring Letter C. Edwin Suterland And letter D. Emile Durkheim Sinasabi dito that individuals daw ay nakakaroon ng criminal behavior through learning by means of communication with person who dwell in criminality. How about the others? Ang sinasabi niya daw dito is that ang criminality daw ay natututunan through communication. So, diniscuss natin yan kanina. Okay? Yan. So, the correct answer is letter C. Bakit letter C? Kasi... Ang keyword dito is learn criminal behavior. Kasi di ba si Edwin Suterland yung nag-propose ng concept ng differential association theory kung saan criminality is learned through social interaction. And social interaction is by means of communication. 
Si Cesar Becarea, ayan, kilala na natin yan. And si Charles B. Goring, he rejected the theory of Lombroso, yung theory of atavism. Na sinasabi niya after he studied 3,000 jailed criminals, na-establish na that non-criminal people tended to have more atavistic traits than criminal. As to Emily Durkheim, his, his profound contributions to contemporary criminology are the concept of anomy. So yung anomy, ito yung lawlessness. The breakdown of social order as a result of loss to standard and values. So last question. In his book, Principles of Criminology, he introduced the following definition of criminology as the entire body of knowledge regarding crime as a social phenomenon. It includes within its scope the process of making laws, the breaking of laws, and the reacting towards the breaking of laws. So with this, hindi ko siya bibigyan ng choices kasi medyo madali to. So sino ang nagbigay na definition ni criminology? That the entire body of knowledge regarding crime as a social phenomenon. So I will not give a choice. Uh, I will not give choices. So, I know. Try to type the name of that person. Okay. Uh, ang tinatanong natin is person. So the correct answer is Edwin Suterland. So bakit? Rafael Igorofalo, di ba? He coined the term criminologia in 1885. Cesar Beccaria is the father of classical criminology. While Paul Topinard, he coined the term criminology in 1887. So si Edwin Suterland, siya yung nagbigay ng famous definition ng criminology together with Donald Crisay. And... It, Edwin Suterland also profound the concept of differential association theory. So that's all. Thank you very much for uh, watching or for um, giving the time para makapag-review together uh, with me. So I would like to take this opportunity to extend my deepest gratitude to attorney Jay Ferraro and the uh, Amisai Review Center for giving me the opportunity to give you a sample or a special lecture regarding introduction to criminology. And I do hope that you learned a lot from our video discussion or from this video discussion about introduction to criminology. So, uh, by the way, I um, meron din akong YouTube channel. So, if you want to just to um, visit or to subscribe, so uh, you can search it sa YouTube ng The Professor tapos uh, the professor space criminology so mas madali kasi sa mga search don so if you just want to you know to visit my uh, YouTube channel so nata upload din ako don ng mga criminology videos or criminology educational videos so that's all and thank you very much and I do hope na marami kayo yung natutunan for today so just uh, last request sa inyo so please rate Uh, your level of understanding. So, five being the highest and one being the lowest. Gano kayo natuto uh, today at the one hour and 41 minutes ng video discussion natin. So, so from the rate of five being the highest and one being the lowest. So, gano kayo natuto in our video discussion for today. Jack Bonified, shout out po muna ako sir, magiging uh, RC next year dahil sa gabay nyo at buong ARC family. Salamat sir. Thank you very much. So yun, um, as sabi nga ni attorney Jay Ferraro, if you want to experience a high caliber um, discussion or review discussion about uh, as you prepare to become a registered criminologist, so mag-enroll na kayo sa Amisai Review Center. So... Yon, sa Amisai Review Center, nandun naman yung link. So, just uh, send a message to Attorney J.M. Ferraro para at least uh, magabayan niya kayo in enrolling sa Amisai Review Center. Meron 4.9, sir. 3, <laughs> na, na, na-late po ako. I, I know, naka-record naman ata tong live, so you can still have the opportunity to rewatch. watch 
So um, if it's okay, attorney, uh, yung YouTube ko po uh, is The Professor Criminology. So yun, if you just want to visit. Uh, alam ko meron ding YouTube channel si attorney Ferraro. So yung Amisai Review Center. So yun, please um, send a message na sa Amisai Review Center FB group or kay Attorney J.M. Ferraro. So if you want to have an inquiry, mag-enroll na kayo at magkita-kita tayo next year sa sa review. And I do hope na face-to-face -face na tayo next year. So marami silang branches. So please just check it out sa kanilang FB para at least uh, malaman natin at magabayan natin yung ating or magabayan kayo in um, achieving that license. Napakasarap ng maging isang registered criminologist. So yung YouTube ko is ito. Thank you sir for allowing me the professor pero you can search it kasi mahirap ihanapin yung the professor kasi merong YouTube channel na, sa basketball. So you can search it like this. Yung the professor criminology. So, if you search the, the Professor Criminology, ayan. Pag sinearch na yan, makikita nyo na yung YouTube channel ko. So, marami rin akong ina-upload na mga videos doon. Yun, may subscriber pala ako dito. So, yun, please... If okay sa inyo, uh, please subscribe sa YouTube channel ka and also sa YouTube channel ni Attorney Ferraro. And also, yung kanilang Amisai Review Center, please uh, mag-inquire na kayo uh, para kapag enroll na kayo and makamit nyo na yung license na hinihingi. Uh, pinapangarap nyo. So, yon. So, if you don't have any more questions, so we can end this FB Live. So, please stay tuned. So please stay tuned sa ating um, sa Amisai Review Center FB group as they will uh, provide announcements. And also alam ko meron pang mga special lectures from other lecturers so some other days. So yon Kung ako sa inyo, please uh, tune in na sa kanilang FB group. So thank you very much. So Goodbye and see you uh, next year sa ating review. So thank you very much. I will end the live na. Salamat.